Hey Megalithomaniacs, how are you doing? So we're back at one of my favorite sites in the whole world, but this one's in Mexico. It's called Quilquilco. It's a huge circular pyramid, which is potentially one of the oldest in the Americas. Now, back in 1923, when it was first dated, it caused a sensation. It came out of the National Geographic. There was a big thing about it. And they dated it to around 7,000 years old because they were dating the lava flow, which came from the local volcano, which overtook this site. The thing is, they then redated it and got it to a different date, which is around 200 BC. And now they think possibly the beginning of construction could have started around 1000 BC. So we're in the Olmec area here, in the Olmec time frame. And there are connections with the Olmec officially. There, are, there was definitely trading between here and the Gulf Coast. But what we're looking at is a gigantic circular pyramid made of earth and stone. And we've got some shots from the air for you so you can see the scale of this. It's kind of unique. Um, there's not many circular pyramids, not, not of this size anyway. There's some in Jalisco, there's some near Puebla as well, one near Puebla, and just a couple of others here and there. Obviously, Uxmal in the Yucatan has got curved corners, but it's not circular. There's a direct connection between Quilquilco and Teotihuacan. It's thought that after it got covered in the uh, lava flow here a couple of thousand years ago, that gave Teotihuacan the opportunity to kind of thrive because it wasn't in competition here because it was thought there was 20,000 people may have been living here in this area, which is really interesting in its own right. We know just down the road from here, there's actually another site um, which is connected with Kukuka, where probably a lot of people stayed. We also must remember that it was next to the great Texcoco Lake on the very southern edge of it. Many of these sites around Mexico City, you know, you don't realize now, but they were on the edge of a very, very large lake, which covered the whole city pretty much until it got drained and the city got built as we see it today. And so when that kind of withdrew, then that's when this became a bit redundant. And then when the obviously the volcano happened it kind of put it out of contention altogether and that's when it kind of died out of this whole site and it kind of got forgotten about and it was covered up by earth um, obviously the volcanic rubble much of it's been cleared away uh, and you're left with what we see today so a lot of work's been done here a lot of excavation uh, i think they're going to do more here because they've only reached certain levels uh, and i think you know the the area that was covered up with the blue tarp that suggests they're still finding things. So we're looking directly on the kind of avenue, the slope leading up to the main pyramid. Now, some of the features of the pyramid uh, are quite unique for this period, which is the pre-classic period. It's 110 meters in diameter, which is pretty big. It's over 300 feet, 25 meters high, so over 75 feet high. And most of the stones are not carved. They're kind of rough hewn blocks of um, basalt from the volcano. They don't, they don't weigh too much, maybe 30 kilos each, and they're all joined together without the use of mortar. Now, they think it was built from, you know, there's some suggestions it was 1000 BC, but 800 BC is the official time frame, up to about 150 BC in succeeding stages. Eight stages of construction have been identified, so it could be the thing that every 52 years they rebuild over the site over and over again. Um, it's thought it could be ceremonial because of the circular nature and the beautiful view from the top. There's two access ramps, not just the one we can see here, uh, from the east and the west. And it's thought that potentially this could be equinox aligned because of that. Now, if that's the case, we don't know. It could be agricultural, but um, like the central altars of each of the buildings here, they're also east and west. And so there could be astronomical uh, reasons for aligning it as such. This is a very interesting part of the site. This is what's called the Kiva. Now, the name is very similar to what we find in North American tradition. And this, it was actually uh, named that in 1923 by Byron Cummings, because he was like the Dean of Southwest Archaeology. 
and he pointed out the resemblance uh, to what we find in the southwest United States where we have like the entrance here then we have the main kind of chamber kind of corbelled roof coming in and they think it dates to around 150 BC built with a volcanic stone called andesite so it's the same kind of andesite that we find in Pumapunku in Bolivia and other such things and it has interesting carvings in there which I have to give you a close-up of um, I have to get in there and give you a close-up of those uh, and they're, which is interesting because they're made from anhydrous iron oxide or hematite and it's one of the earliest examples of architectural painting we find in this area and it's thought this was like a ritual site possibly you know Temascal, possibly psychedelics, possibly uh, other things, but it's placed right next to the pyramid. There's probably more of these as well. You can see the position here right below, below down the side of uh, the main entrance going into the pyramid. It's like, so often the location is decided because of the energetic and almost like spiritual or altered state effect that you actually have when you're inside one of these. So inside a kiva with andesite, which is highly magnetic stone, um, and energetic, uh, with crystalline in it as well. Plus this is probably on a fault line, earth energies, ley lines, that kind of thing. So it makes you question, were these actually, the builders of this site, were they actually doing building it here for this purpose? So here we can see one side of the pyramid and down there but beneath that blue tarp are some large looking stones i'm quite intrigued by that we want to get down there really but you can see the way they've carved out like the solid ground the rock and the earth to create a ditch much like we find at avebury or you know stone hands like a henge and you can see like the layered kind of stonework and mound going up to the top very, very, very interesting site. Very much larger than you think. You know, you can see it from the air. It doesn't look that big, but actually it's huge. It's like over 300 feet wide, uh, which is pretty amazing. And just look how deep this ditch goes down here. It's, so it's a remarkable construction. The man hours, the workload here is really quite something. See over there through the ditch, the other side of the ditch. We're gonna kind of try and get over there if we can. It's like some kind of cave. It almost looks like it's kind of, tunnel going underneath we do think there are tunnels here because we're probably going to have lava tubes in this area there's probably tunnels like there are most pyramids going back to this kind of era and uh it really wouldn't surprise me <clears throat> if that was the case here so this is the area kind of behind the pyramid there's a pathway leading down so we can't get in there because of covid restrictions but you can see in the distance there some kind of rocky outcrop where there could be small caves. We know there are caves possibly over just in that area behind these trees. And if we just take a walk back to the pyramid where JJ's standing over there, you can see it's very interesting because it goes deep. Why would they build a huge ditch? It just seems like, is it, you know, is it for defensive purposes? Is it for storing water, ceremonial purposes perhaps? You know, what, what was this all about? It's really, really interesting why they would go to that much effort. I mean, all the pyramids here are a huge amount of effort. So, you know, you can't put it past them. They just like working with stone in huge communities. One of the things about this site, when it was excavated back in 1923 and they got local workers involved, Byron Cummings, the archeologist, they, when they were digging, they, start, they saw this strange blue light appear above the pyramid. Now this excited all the workers. They thought it was sort of a sign of Mayan or Aztec treasure. Fortunately, no real treasure was found, but there were some wonderful artifacts which we're gonna show you in the video here. Also, we found some pieces in the National Museum, uh, the Anthropology Museum in Mexico City. And so there's some kind of energetic effect going on with this blue light. And it's po probably because it's on a fault line. This whole area is faulted and it could be where they chose this site in the first place for energetic purposes. So we're just heading up the main ramp to the top of the pyramid here. And you can see the stonework. It goes much deeper than we're actually standing on now. If we have a look down here as we walk up. You can see a, a very shallow part of the ditch. It gets much deeper the further you go around. But it just shows you that there are multiple levels here, which I believe was part of the 
prerequisite of rebuilding every 52 years, which is what we find at many pyramid sites all over Mexico, Mayan, Olmec, Zapotec, Toltec. And this is one of the levels here. This is the actual ramp itself. You can see that here. So this is like a northern passageway coming into the pyramid. If you look in that direction, that is to the north. Obviously, if we go back on ourselves, where JJ is, that is to the south. And you can see the great mountain volcano in the background over there which is the volcano where all this basalt came from and this andesite. And that's what covered it up in this lava flow, which originally dated the site to 7,000 years old, although that got changed later on. So this is one of the low rectangular altars that JJ's down there now. And only very, very, very low, but they have cinnabar. Their soil is stained with cinnabar, which is like mercuric oxide, which is a ritual red pigment, also used for trading. Um, there were five of these altars, apparently. This is actually, remember, this is inside the pyramid, so we're gonna get down there and have a quick look. So these rectangular altars are only between 40 and 130 centimeters high. And they're located in the center of each of the structures. Now I've only got one on display here. Uh, and they're, they seem to be as though they were placed there through the various stages of constructing the pyramid, which I believe again is every 52 years where they would do the new fire ceremony and recreate and rebuild. So this is probably the most top one, the latest one. There's probably ones deep beneath it as well. But JJ just points out that these rounded stones here were probably used for like heating. They were like used as like, I don't know, it's like a Tamascal or a sauna, and it would create heat within the actual thing. Three of the altars that have been found correspond to the three stages of construction, like I said, with two others as well. So the processed soil that was used to actually build them was stained completely with a red pigment of great ritual significance called cinnabar or mercuric oxide. And that was thought to have been bought here by traders from different areas of the country. This fifth altar here, this is like the fifth one, the most not top one. And it was almost completely in ruins and it was partly built of volcanic rock. Only one other altar has been explored. And we saw underneath the blue tarp around the other side, that may have been another one. And so I'm finding this absolutely fascinating that we have these here. So we're now actually going inside the top part of the pyramid, one of the altars. This is amazing, I've never did this before. So we're on top of the pyramid in one of the five sacred altars. It's absolutely silent in here. So we're inside the pyramid of Quilco. Look, you can see this here. This is actually the altar where sacred ceremonies would take place. So this is absolutely astonishing. Look at this. Wow, so this is the sacred point where the most energetic point, I would imagine, of the whole site. So behind me is like the sacred altar, one of the five altars inside the top of the pyramid of Coquilco. Just We just snuck in and had a look, but look, you can see the raised area. That's where they would have made all their offerings, ceremonies. 
The energy in here is amazing. I think that's why they chose this. So we just come out of like the center of the pyramid. We just went inside and through this channel to one of the five altars. The energy in there was magnificent. And this whole area feels like it's, it's really woken me up. It feels like this is like very much a religious spiritual site. It's not necessarily, you know, for, you know, standard purposes. It's got other, other aspect to it. Absolutely blown away. I'm sort of speechless, really. So just beneath us here is the second platform from the top. You can just see the width of this. It's like 15, 20 meters, 650 feet, something like that. So this is a gigantic construction, absolutely gigantic. You can see much further below is where the henge or the ditches that goes all the way deep into the ground. So we're just climbing down from the main pyramid here at Quiquilcola. Uh, it's my third or fourth time coming here and I'm more impressed this time than I have been the other trips because we actually got a chance to go inside it. I've never had that opportunity before. There's always been guards here. So we just sort of had a look. We didn't touch anything. We just photographed and filmed it. We didn't. That was an interesting experience because I really felt the energy in there. Now, the older I get, the less I kind of sense this kind of energy at these sites. But actually here, I really felt it. So that really intrigued me because that proves to me this is an energetic site. This proves the theory that I mentioned in my last video where, because they built it on a fault line, definitely underground water here as well. We know that there's springs nearby. Uh, they were working with the energy. That's why this site was chosen. It's also got geodetic significance as well. Carl Monk has actually found that if you multiply the latitude of where this sits on the planet each number if you multiply them together it equals exactly 360. now whether that's a coincidence or not i don't know but this whole idea of archaeocryptography and the numbers of its latitude equaling the circumference of a circle a 360 degrees is really interesting but i think it's more of a ritual religious significantly kind of energetic site here which I think has been overlooked you know but they, we know because of the kivas and the red paint they were having kind of visionary experiences probably taking natural psychotropic plants as part of their culture and absolutely amazing so if you're in Mexico City currently it's free entry as well do come to Cuicuilco and uh, check out one of the most unique pyramids on the entire planet.